actually uh, in Special Olympics, everybody's a winner. We had a, a, a nice, uh, quite a fantastic game. The team, they played as a team. Nigerian team really gave all their best. But we have some technical issues we, which really affect us um, during our fourth quarter. Some of our players are in power problem. But in Special Olympics, what is important is we really had fun and um, all the players, both the opponents and um, the Nigerian fans we are so impressed in our performance. Uh, the players are still sending their message to Nigeria that they should give them a chance to compete. And they have come to World Game Abu Dhabi. They have really made Nigeria proud. They, they uh, came out with a um, silver medal, which is a very, very also a good uh, position. All right, you heard from Michael Ani, who's been coaching the Special Olympics basketball team for a long time now, mm. for free, yeah. It's for free. Okay. Uh, Shola Rajas is here in the studio. Shola, good morning. It's good to have you. Good morning, guys. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's great to have Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's in Nigeria. I mean, you've seen, they've gone, they've, it's, yeah, I think they said to say they went the song and conquered, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I believe Why so. Are you I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they went the saw and conquered. Absolutely. Lots of medals and they're coming back home soon. You know, like we said, it's not really about um, winning. Yes. It's more about uh, participating, which is the Inclusion. Olympic creed yeah, and all of that. But the beauty of it is that these uh, Nigerians have gone way uh, above what we were expecting. They've done very, very well. I'm sure the sponsors will be happy, the parents will be happy, the athletes themselves will be happy, the officials and the coaches. And you were talking about uh, Coach Annie, who's been working with the team for so many years uh, for free. Yeah. It's, that's amazing. Incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, it does so a lot. Yeah. It, it just yeah. adds to the beauty of um, special sports and special mm -hmm. Olympics. And, ah, man, I'm praying that we can actually do more for them. Yeah. I am so, so touched that they went there and they were not disgraced they did very well mm. 23 medals in all nine of them gold mm. huge one for them big, big gold yeah. medal. And like you said, <laughs> the closing ceremony is going to be uh later today mm -hmm. and uh nicole shazinga is expected uh to wow. perform uh on the night as a superstar uh singer right there and uh the volunteers as well so over twenty thousand of them they're usually the backbone uh, of, uh, of major events they'll be put in the spotlight as well too then the athletes and the coaches will do the traditional uh, parade and it all ends exactly like that. <laughs> i wish you could continue <laughs> you, you know like like, a... like we said a couple of these kids have not even been outside the shores of nigeria before mm -hmm. some of them have traveled a couple of times yeah. so the exposure the education that they're going to get from going outside the shores of nigeria the friends that they will make you know it's just a beautiful experience. Awesome. I have goosebumps all over me. Just, <laughs> just thinking about and whatever, what, what they've had for the past uh, couple of days. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We can get pictures from the volleyball team. They won a gold medal in that one also, which is a huge one for them beating Germany to one. I mean, we to play against Germany in a tournament like this and beating them to their own game. It's something that's really huge. You know, Nigeria now, we know they carry last. <laughs> At all. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that slogan is, uh, is the most popular out there. I mean, uh, surely it has to be Nigeria the carry last. I mean, they carry One last. of the most popular slogans out there. And that's the, uh, the they had to come back from, from yeah. behind against Germany to win that uh, gold in volleyball. And so fantastic, uh, fantastic result for it's, them as It's well. in our DNA, you know. We don't give Despite up. We just keep going regardless of everything that... Um, Every challenge out yeah, there. Yeah, we just keep going, you wow. know. Okay, let's get a reaction now from first one. Talking about one of the journalists that's actually covering this game. Yemi Adibai, we told you yesterday now, but I'll be caught up with the journalist and he shares his own view on how it is to actually cover the Special Olympics. There's no difference at all. It's almost the same thing, or I can even say a little bit better. Because um, these guys are always video ready, they're picture ready, and best of all, they are more humane than we even think. They, they capture moments, they, they play their games fantastically well. Um, they get little or no coordination. It's almost like an actual, at an actual Olympics. My experience has been breathtaking, it has been fantastic. I've not met amazing people like this ever in my life. Friendly, um, picture ready, video ready. Even the coordination is just, everything is just supreme. Um, I'm really happy I came here to um, cover and document this event. I'm really happy about that. 
happy she will be there, happy about the event. He's not just the only one that's reacting to it, but then this time around, a player, one of the players, one of the players who actually won a good medal in the volleyball event, is excited to do part of these games. I'm happy to be part of the Special Olympics team, the volleyball team. I'm happy to be here. It's a privilege for me because we won the final today, and this is my first gold medal. And this is my first time to be in Abu Dhabi. So it should be a pleasure for me. And I want to thank, I want to thank Special Olympics for giving me the opportunity to be here. <laughs> well, it's like in everyone, the opportunity to be there just to compete. I just you mentioned it earlier, you know, just for them to go and go to places they've never been to before compete and come back home with Mendes. He's, you see this big smile on his face when he started talking. <laughs> you know it's going to have a, a trickle-down effect. It's going to have yeah. a ripple effect and everything because they're going to go back to their schools, they're going to go back to their clubs and their friends and they'll pass on some knowledge and some level of exposure. I, I'm just hoping that um, the people behind Special Olympics will be more empowered yeah. to do the more for them, you know, point. so that we can expand the net mm -hmm. and get more athletes into Special Olympics Nigeria. So very, very important. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia and uh, Shola, it's good to, uh, uh, I should let you know as well to Special Olympics Nigeria, they provide uh, uh, sports and activities year round. So when they come back, they won't just go and sit in yeah. the house. No, it's, it's going to continue for the rest of the year until the next uh, summer games. You, you know, you uh, took the word out of my mouth because I was going to say that uh, I was at uh, the Teslin Balogun Stadium a few months ago. Mm -hmm. We went there for something else entirely, Different. and there was a Special Olympics event going on. So we spent about an hour <laughs> just watching them. We suspended what we came to do, wow. and we were watching these kids, and it was beautiful. Now, the reason why I brought that up is that it's time for the mainstream, when talking the IOC, NOC, and all of them, to learn from what Special Olympics is doing, especially the local ones in Nigeria. It's not for us to borrow relief from them because they have, um, they seem to have like a master plan and they're following through. Yeah. So I think got the we, blueprints, right? Yeah, they have the blueprints. <laughs> and they've also got sponsors <laughs> also. Just maybe if you have more, just that recently, you know, uh, Nigerian Olympic Committee released a list of athletes that are getting uh, grants from IOC yeah, and all them, like of them. 11 of them. I just imagine the others, what happens. I mean, if you can have more sponsors, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad you, two, you, three, four you, you brought that up, the yeah. IOC uh, sponsorship for yeah. 11 Nigerian athletes. Mm. Some of them are even outside Nigeria. Mm. And we know how, it's, how, how difficult so it is. I'm also Aruna Quadri and the rest of them. But I'm glad I spread across various sports, sports. you know. Adegoroye in wrestling. We have some of them mm. in weightlifting and all of that. Now, can we also look at the ones that don't have sponsorship and look for grants, mm -hmm. especially because it's almost time for the Olympics and we need to start budgeting for them. We don't need to wait. So the budget for, is coming out know, next year. Don't, need, don't, don't raise your hope. You see, that's the sad part. <laughs> we don't need to wait until next year. Then we now do this two months crash course and everybody's glad. Uh, yeah, we are uh, happy. We will let's... have money. Yeah, it looks very good. It so, was so easy there to just go from the Special Olympics to the Main Olympics. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah. <laughs> today is all about the Special Olympics World Summer Games. Yeah. Comes to an end today. The closing ceremony in Nigeria was a part of it. Did very well. And we'll be yeah. back home in a few days' time. That's where we'll leave that for now. Of course, when, we, when they return, uh, they will be celebrated. They will be hosted of by course. the sponsors. And we're going to cover, uh, you know, definitely that event. Of course, Amy Adebayo will be back by then as well to give us... <laughs> You know, first time, uh, you know. At least they will not be carried there with trucks rented from my uh, no, no absolutely no chance. No chance. I just have to shake me. that table a bit. Please <laughs> stop shaking it. No chance. I'm not breaking it. I'm not breaking it. Yeah, talk to them about sponsorship now. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Like, let's let this go. Yeah, because you're going to shake more. Yeah, women's football. Not yes. in Nigeria, actually. It's in England. I mean, for sure. the first time, the Women's Super League in England is actually getting a sponsor, a title sponsor. I mean, it's worth over three years. That's 10 million Incredible. Hey, dig that. Mm. Yeah, it's a okay. big deal. Um, you see, when I saw this story, I was yeah. very happy because this is what we've been praying for for Nigerian <laughs> women's Please. football. And I will not waste time to take it and bring it home. So you can shake home. the table. Now, the, 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 this is good. Uh, 10 million pounds might sound like small money. It is but, big money. But, but they were not even getting anything exactly. before. And, and the, UEFA has over 1,900 mm. 
registered professional footballers. This is one of the few women's leagues that is fully professional right. in the world. Correct. Now, ap apart from the money that comes into the league, the beauty of it is that they're going to be sponsoring about 100 girls' school teams. You know, they're going to partner with about 100 schools, mm -hmm. which means that they're thinking about the conveyor future. belt. They're thinking about the future, you know, going to the grassroots to right. get the talent, they're to involved. nurture the talent and bring them into the professional league. It's a beautiful thing. And we must learn from these things if we want to compete with these people because these are the same people we're going to meet at the World Cup and we think it's rocket science. It is not. It's just yeah. because they know how to do the right things at the right times. There's no overage players playing in any of their teams and all of that. You know, they know how to use their facilities and maintain them. Yeah. They put structures in place, you know, so that everything works like, you know, it's... Seamlessly. It, it, yeah, seamlessly. Yeah. We must learn from this thing. Our league, especially the women's league, it's not a proper league. It's not a professional league. That's the reality. It's not even a proper league. I'm not even <laughs> going to put professional there. Because one moment they're playing, the next moment they're suspended. Then they come back and there's so many uh, walkovers and all of that. No, because it's stopped for the past two it, years. We've not had that for a while now. Yeah, we've not had three few, seasons. Uh, few. Yes, because mm. everything is abridged and all of that. <laughs> and look, the truth is, I know that the organizers are trying. But this is a charge to them to do better than what they have done, mm. to do more for the girls. Now, we also need to call out the women. The bulk of the people going to watch football are men. And men's football, the disparity in pay is just crazy. Over $400 million is the total pay that will go to footballers at the next World Cup. While the increase recently for the Women's right. World Cup this year is $30 million. Now, the $30 million is double from the previous World Cup, which was 15 million. Increase, so yeah. that's less than 10% of what men will share mm. at the next World Cup. The women are getting that less than 10%. And they're really happy because it was 15. That's and it's just been increased now. to 30. Now, so the, the argument is, oh, men's football is more viable. It no is. problem. Okay, we agree. Yeah. It's more viable. But there's nothing wrong with not trying the women's game. Mm. But we need to call out the women now. Come and support your own. Go to the stadiums. Buy the tickets. We have numbers. They, they, look, every... Uh, time you look at statistics, we are told that there are more women than men. Hmm. So, can we not get women, women to, to support themselves? As well. Yes, they need to start watching <laughs> women's football. Now, men should too, but I'm just saying that if we have a large influx of women, women who are in corporate Nigeria, who are holding down top positions, should buy into the women's yeah. league. They should encourage themselves. They should go out, buy the tickets, support the team. Maybe that will increase the influx of funds and interest. And in a few years, women's league might be at par with the men's league. Mm. It's not impossible, especially in a Nigeria where the Nigerian league is struggling and is just doing its thing. You know. So please, it's a charge to women to support their but, own, but, um, while the men continue but, to nurture and help. But um, Shola, let me just put it out there like yeah. this and say. Um, what if the products out there, I mean, uh, the women out there, they don't find it exciting enough to watch women's football? You see, you started with a negative, what if? What, what if, if the women find it exciting too? I'll throw no, it back at you. What if it's not just exciting for them? Of course, what if it is? <laughs> what if it's not? No, but can you see the future? <laughs> can you? But I mean... He's no, talking no, about, you, he's talking really about your support system you, here. You've, you've, come from, you've come from a negative to say, no. what if it is not exciting? It's because not, there's a reason. Is that a fact? Is there's it, is there's that a, a reason why you want them to now start supporting it. So that, obviously there's been a reason Kyle, why they've not been showing Kyle, up. So why have they Kyle, not been showing up a few all this years while? Ago, a few years ago, the league that caught our attention, especially when I was going up, was the Brazilian league. Mm. From the Brazilian league to the Italian league, not the English league. We used to call it kick and follow. We did not find it interesting. You know what they did? They went back, they repackaged mm. the EPL. Everybody's crazy about it. It's arguably the biggest league in the world. Arguably. Because I know the people who like La Liga and Italy, uh, an Italian league would not like what I've said, but arguably it is the biggest league in the world. It took a lot of work. The teams came together to agree to bring excitement into it. I'm saying that we can do the same for our league, the men's mm. league and the women's league. And it takes a bit of push from people like you and me and all the people out there. That's why I'm calling out women who are in places of authority. We are first ladies. We are people in corporate Nigeria who are holding our top positions. It's not about if the league doesn't look that fantastic when it starts. It's about you coming out to say, no matter what you're doing, we have your back. 
Look, Newcastle is a team based in England. Yeah. They have one of the best supportership ever yeah. in the world. You know why? Because if they go down, the stadiums are still packed. Right. Well, statistically, other teams, when they go down to a lower league, they lose followership. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen like that. So I'm saying we can borrow from things like that. It is not until the league becomes interesting that you should get on board. Get on board now. now. Help us now. Help us develop the women's league and take okay. it to the level that it should be on. That's because that's where we're going to get talent from the national team from. Yeah. That's where we're going to get to empower more women. You see, it's not supposed to be a charity thing. It's supposed to be business at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. So fans want value for their money as well. These women will play exciting football. I've been watching women's football for a couple of years. Yeah. Look, the most successful national team ever in the history of Nigeria is the Super the Falcons. Falcons. Right. So if they were not playing exciting football, how come they are that good? Okay. What we need to do is to put <laughs> aside our bias and put aside all these gender wars if, yeah. and understand that we must empower and support the women's league and the women's football to get to the level it should get on. Simple. Okay. Well, you go on and, and on about coaches, this. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Sayo, no just, more questions <laughs> <laughs> about this one. We just hope that some people will just actually come forward and sponsor the women's league because that's the reason the league is still on break right now. If they have the money, the league would have started. The FA also have a huge role to play. Let's get a reaction from the women's super league. Now how excited the coaches are for this sponsorship, for this title sponsorship. So it's a hugely exciting moment for the Women's Super League. It's not just the investment, it's the fact that Barclays, the brand of Barclays, the, the reach that's going to enable us uh, to sort of link into to help us to build fan, fan base, build awareness of the Women's Super League, get more people following the game. That's really important for the future sustainability of women's professional football in this country. This partnership will help us to create 100 girls football schools partnerships across the country involving 6,000 schools uh, where we can get girls football into the curriculum and in after school clubs and give girls the opportunities to play and we know they want to play from the research. There's a massive demand. This will really help us to meet that demand. It's got a lot of fan attraction now. It's actually growing quite, uh, quite well. You know, Barclays has always been associated with football in the United Kingdom but now to do it dedicated to building a professional league for girls uh, and girls playing in, in, in high school, that's the, I think that's an important contribution that Barclays can make to the United Kingdom. I played football um, as a young, young girl. I had to play with boys, so I think it's great now that there's so many girls here, especially today behind me, that have an opportunity to play together um, and grow. And I think it's important for their self-confidence, um, their resilience, um, and to be healthy. You know, playing football is a healthy sport. You're active. Um, teamwork is also um, a good thing. So they're learning things along the way about being healthy. Okay, um, Ty is still talking we're, here. We're I mean, we're going to carry on. You yeah, talk about that later. Go. We'll create a day where both of you will just argue that. No, no, no it's not an argument issue. To be honest with you, I would love that. No, as long as yeah. I'm speaking for uh, women, I, I, I agree. would love that. Okay, we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do that. Yes, right? please. All right, we'll try Let's please. go to the Olympic Eagles now. I mean, right. we wanted them to actually fly, but they didn't fly. I mean, 2 0 whipping in Libya. <laughs> it was a good game. And, but, and, and the uh, star studded Olympic Eagles. No, <laughs> what, what's your title again? Yeah, the star studded because a lot of those players <laughs> are the most famous under 23. Okay, what we have here uh, is actually the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We want We're to not see about the uh, uh, yeah. confirmation of the results of the under 23 uh, Eagles, the qualifier <laughs> for the AFCON under 23 <laughs> championship. <laughs> Just the confirmation of the result. That's what we wanted to see. I mean, it was 2 nil ended in favor, of course, of the host and <laughs> nation. But the thing is, <laughs> Libya is actually playing in Tunisia. So we're thinking mm. the... Mm. We were. Don't say we. Don't say we were we, thinking. We... This, we, we felt, or we thought... You felt. <laughs> don't say we, because I said I yesterday... I <laughs> that they will win at least mm. two one. Where, where did you get this... Um, I don't know where she's got it from. Taught from. <laughs> so, let, you see, guys, let's be Opt honest. Let's optimism. be very... I let's be very... Like. I like the optimism. Okay. I'll, I'll buy into it after this. But <laughs> let's be very honest with ourselves. The yeah. first thing I really want to talk about is that mistake that has been going on with the Nigerian Football Federation calling this team the dream team over and over You're again. You're not having that. You know, it, it, they still tweeted it a few days ago and I went to their Twitter and to say, what's dreaming about this? That was even before they lost to Tunisia. Let's first drop that. Then it shows you how serious we are. Hmm. Then, what level of preparation did we have before playing Libya? That's oh, we thought because we're defending champions, we're just going to come there and show up and, and show win. out. No, it's not going to happen. Ah. The truth is, the Libyans were better. Right. They got an early goal 
which destabilized our team. Mm. And before we could get into our rhythm, was Ka Felix, kindly was hold all. your thoughts. I know you have a lot to say about uh, the Olympic Eagles, uh, the debacle that happened in Tunisia against uh, Libya. But we need to go on the break first and we'll come back. We get to look at the starting lineup for that game and get uh, Shalaza's thoughts on it. <laughs> 